Welcome to the Joy of Cruising podcast with your host, award-winning author, Paul C. Thornton, a weekly conversation with the amazing cruisers featured in the Joy of Cruising trilogy, comprised of the Joy of Cruising, Cruising Interrupted, and new release, The Joy of Cruising Again. Each book is a compilation of features about cruisers and cruise and travel personalities from around the world. It's the next best thing to cruising, hearing about cruising from the unique and diverse perspectives of Paul's amazing guests. Hello, passionate cruisers. We've got a real treat this week on the Joy of Cruising podcast. I am delighted to welcome contemporary jazz artist Vincent Ingala to the show. One of the fastest emerging contemporary jazz recording artists in recent history, multi-instrumentalist, composer, and producer, Vincent Ingala has blasted into an exciting stratosphere of his own making since his 2010 critically acclaimed debut album, North End Soul. Still in his early 20s, the charismatic saxophonist has been named Billboard Smooth Jazz Artist of the Year in 2012, Sirius XM Watercolors Breakthrough Artist of the Year in 2013, and his music is consistently found atop the most noteworthy music charts in the world, including nine number one hits on the Billboard Smooth Jazz chart and 21 singles in the, smooth, in the Billboard Smooth Jazz Top 10. An old soul, as he's often referred to, Vincent possesses a deep knowledge and appreciation for all genres of music. His versatility on multiple instruments makes him sought after both live and as a producer in the studio. This coast-to-coast sensation brings a playful spirit and youthful enthusiasm to contemporary jazz with a real sense for what music fans are seeking, from recordings to live performance. In The Joy of Cruising, I wrote extensively about theme cruising in a section called Theme Cruising, Two Passions in One, and another section called Performing on the Ocean. I am delighted to welcome Vincent and Gala to the show to talk about theme cruising from the performer's perspective. Vincent, welcome to the Joy of Cruising podcast. Thank you, my friend. Good to be with you, Paul. Happy to be here. So how are you doing? I'm great. I'm great. We uh, just saw each other a couple of weeks ago. We were on the high seas, of course, but like you said, we're back in uh, civilian land now and <laughs> got our sea, be- sea legs back, hopefully. I-, I know I did. You know, it took a little bit of time after you got off the boat. I was yep. still feeling like I was rocking a little bit, but <laughs> that's that's to be expected. So you had to do uh, uh, two cruises, right, in a row? Yeah, we were doing the uh, smooth jazz cruise um, two weeks at sea, two back-to-back weeks in a row. And uh, what a time. It was a great two weeks, flew by. Each week was very, you know, unique and different than the other. It wasn't exactly the same. You know, the, the audience is a little different. There's always a little more spontaneous musical ideas that are, you know, slightly different to, mm-hmm. from the previous week. But it was it was fantastic. Still, Still coming off a great time. Yeah, it, it was wonderful. And I'll talk a little bit about it shortly. So I shared your very impressive bio with the listeners. So fill us in on some details that were not in your bio. Where are you from? I know that you started young. Tell us that story. Who are your influences? Anything you want to share? Well, I was born in a small town uh, called Prospect, Connecticut, born and raised. Um, I still live there to this day. I love my small little town. The population 10,000 people, roughly, you know, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. it neighbors Waterbury, Connecticut, which is the, it was the brass capital of the world in New Haven, uh, you know, New Haven County. So that's where I'm from. Mm-hmm. Um, I just grew up in music my whole life, uh, surrounded by it constantly, never sports, never anything else. Just my family is, is, is music people, period. My father was an old school DJ. Uh, he had vinyl, literally, you know, he was a mobile disc jockey. So I, I, I just spent Every ounce of time I could flip it through the crates and and you know, just just listening to every every piece of record he had and it was fifties sixties, Elvis Beatles rock and roll and then he had, you know, quite extensive soul collection. My father had had an affinity for horn groups, you know, in particular Mandrill, uh, Brass Construction, BT Express groups like that. You know, man, it was just oh. like he went deep. My father, you know, so I I all those influences got stored up here. And, um, and then the whole jazz movement, you know, the whole you know, Crusaders gave me a Crusaders record. And he was starting to listen to 
uh, Grover and Ronnie Laws, and then it transitioned into what we now know as contemporary smooth jazz, you know, and it's kind of an extension of that whole music back then. So, you know, uh, when I was playing the sax in uh, fifth grade, that's when I started, uh, 10 years old, I picked it up in the school band. I was listening to a lot of smooth jazz on mm-hmm. the radio, and I'd start to emulate what I would hear my parents play every Sunday morning. You know, there was like a smooth jazz brunch, and I'd hear artists like, you know, Boney James and, and Richard Elliott and... You know, the, the, those were like the, you know, the contemporary people for me being, I was young listening to them. So, you know, but I also had a, a you know, a prior um, affinity for, for all the, the old school guys too, Wilton Felder and, and Sam Butera and Grover and, 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 and Gato Barberi. And so, you know, I was just, I just loved saxophone, you know, so I kind of gravitated towards that the most. I was playing drums and guitar and keys all through, you know, my you know, grade school and growing up. But but by the time fifth grade came, I kind of started to really focus in on the sax because it was a, uh, it seemed like a challenge for me. You know, it seemed like something that was a little more harder to get a good sound out of. The drums were a little easier, guitar, but sax, I wanted to sound like these guys on the radio. And so I knew I had to put a little time in. And so I think that's what kept me going this whole time. And I eventually stuck with it enough to the point where I, I kind of fell into my own sound and that kind of became my my main voice so to speak the saxophone and it's it's continued to to this day i still play all the other instruments but the sax has kind of become what i i identify the closest to and i think what people identify my music the most with is mm-hmm. is, is saxophone you know i'll bet when you were in fifth grade and you picked up that sax and you're already into smooth jazz you probably were the only one in your class who was into smooth jazz oh no doubt no doubt i mean yeah. You know, not even uh, not even the adults really knew about it. I mean, it, it's a, it's a, as you know, it's a very um, it's a very uh, close circle of fans and musicians and, mm-hmm. and, and, and people that like the music. You know, it's not mainstream. I think the word jazz gets associated with bebop and straight ahead to, to the mainstream a lot of the times. But, you know, in the case of smooth jazz, you know, it's a it's like a mm-hmm. cool following. You know, there's the people that know it, know it. And the people that are in the world they understand the right. artists that are in it and the the influences that they had to listen to to come up the ranks to listen to smooth jazz and to to get it to that point the appreciation for everything that preceded it but uh, yeah it was like you know I was really the only one listening to mm-hmm. that music and and, and and that could identify with all the the modern day artists at the time that were were being played on smooth jazz radio mm-hmm. so as uh, Vincent mentioned I met Uh, him on the Smooth Jazz Cruise uh, last month on the Celebrity Millennium. I went to uh, your high energy headline performance, Vincent, and throughout the cruise, day and late night, I saw you in collaborations with a number of legendary performers and Grammy winners. Besides exhausting, what was performing on the Smooth Jazz Cruise like? Well, you know, um, just just performing on a cruise in general is just... uh quite an experience because there's you're surrounded by endless endless musicians that are one more talented than the other a lot of them in my case you know legends that i grew up listening to and um that i have have gone to collaborate with over the years so now they're my friends we're close friends and so it's it's not only a constant um camaraderie and one big jam session it's also a big hang it's a friendship and it's a chance for us to kind of break bread so to speak through music and and get together it's like i call it like disneyland for musicians it's like there's no better place to be than uh hanging with your peers and making music and networking and exchanging so um between all the various different venues on the ship you know there was quite a few of them there was of course like the main stage the theater and then we had the uh the main the grand dining room every night would be converted into a jazz club at night. They would strip the tables and the chairs and set up like festival style seating with candles on the tables. And it was like a an awesome, huge, mega, you know, six, seven hundred seat club venue. And then of course you had the lounges, you know, the the smaller right. lounges, you know, which is uh big ones, small ones, upstairs, downstairs, the, you know, martini, but there's so many places to hear music and um you really can't you can't stack them in like in a form of a hierarchy. They're all very unique. They're all very cool. I mean, you could be having just as much fun watching somebody in the lounge that you could be in the Mm -hmm. theater. You know, it's just, uh, as a matter of fact, a lot of people like the intimate venues even more because Mm -hmm. you're right on top of the artists and you feel like you're in the living room 
watching your, your favorite artist perform. And it's just, it's this intimacy that you really can't get anywhere else. Because think about it, if you're, if you're a, a mega fan of this genre and you pay to come on here and you see your favorite artists, you're mm-hmm. not only going to see them in concert, you're having dinner with them, you're swimming in the pool with them, you're, there, it's all one big family that meshes and there's no hierarchy. There's no, it, it's just beautiful. It's just, we're all equal on the ship and it's just a, it's just a, a really unique experience that you can't really describe unless you're on it, you know? Yeah. I, I, you, you mentioned it was like a, uh, it's like Disneyland for, for uh, performers, for a uh, staunch, uh, smooth jazz uh, fan like myself. It was like Disneyland for me after, I would say after the second or third day on the cruise, I mean, I felt like I had already gotten what I get out of a normal seven day cruise. You know, I, <laughs> I, I couldn't believe that we had so much more ahead of us. Well, that's uh, that's the thing. You get a lot on the smooth jazz cruise. And, it, it, you know, a lot of people say that it's hard for <laughs> regular cruise patrons to go back to a regular cruise after experiencing this, because it's just, you get so much, you know, not only nonstop music and entertainment, but they, they take care of everybody in other ways that you can't, uh, you can't even measure up to. So it's just, it's just endless for, for seven days and seven nights. It's, it's a, it's really amazing experience top to bottom start to finish Mm -hmm. the smooth jazz cruise is put on by jazz cruises who i uh feature in the uh upcoming uh the joy of cruising again uh you you've been on earlier smooth jazz uh cruises or jazz cruises uh right yes my first one was in um january of 2020 with them and then of course we were going to sail in the following year and then the, the pandemic hit so it was great to uh, return for a second year and finally get, you know, two weeks under under our belt because we were supposed to do another week um, in March of 2020. They were separated by one month, mm-hmm. but this time it was simultaneous. Mm-hmm. So it was just by that point, we were such a, a well-oiled machine. You know, the train just kept rolling. So it was great. Mm-hmm. Uh, have you done other uh, theme cruises? I have. You know, I've actually been doing theme cruises, jazz themed cruises since 2011. I started with uh, Dave Koz and Friends at Sea. I've done every cruise with Dave uh, except for 2012. So um, 11, 13, 14, 16, 17, 18, 19, and uh, 21 and 22. We, yes, I've, I've done all those Koz cruises and now two with the Smooth Jazz Cruise. And I did. I forgot. Also, in 2016, I did um, the Capital Jazz Super Cruise. This all falls under the belt of the, mm-hmm. you know, the, the jazz R and B category. So, um, yeah. I mean, it, looking back on it now, I'm definitely definitely no stranger to how cruising works, and I've gotten very comfortable with it. I, I think I'm. Uh, I consider myself good at it, and w- I mean, what I mean by that is I. I have the temperament for it. I love being social as it is. And I, I'm, I'm very good with, you know, uh, being with people and being social. I, I just my personality naturally is like that. I love performing. I love the business. So it's a perfect environment for me. You get dressed mm-hmm. up every night, you go out to dinner, you do shows, you're constantly around shows, you're networking with musicians. I love it. It's real, And you're all, you're self-contained mm-hmm. on the ship for a week. So it's not like you got to keep flying every day. Like when we tour normally throughout the year and we repack and, you're set up, you set up shop for, for one or two weeks. Everything's right there. So it's great. It's just, you're, you're, you're rolling by the, by mm-hmm. the couple of days in you're rolling. Now, what was it like for you as a performer during the uh, pandemic shutdown when you couldn't cruise or perform on land? Well, it was, um, you know, it was, it was terrible for everybody. I mean, as you know, and, and not just musicians, it's just all, all professions and everything just stopped. We stopped touring just like that just everything just shut down overnight and uh you know mm-hmm. as 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 musicians and performers we part of you know what feeds our soul is we got to play we got to be out there we got to be interacting mm-hmm. with the audience and, and and networking and 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 all that so it was quite a culture shock to all of us just to be going 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 mm-hmm. going then all of a sudden it just stripped away just overnight and that's a you know it's a mm-hmm. i think we all learned a, a huge lesson you know we didn't really appreciate what we had not that we didn't appreciate it but when when life is going so fast you don't realize what you had until it's gone and so i think going back into it now mm-hmm. um everything is full steam ahead you know thank god like i would like normal mm-hmm. and um i think we all went into it with a, a brand new appreciation now that we 
uh, mm-hmm. are, are back in business, so to speak. So uh, we'll never take for granted mm-hmm. little things that we did again, like having to get up early to catch a plane and, and going to bed late and waking up early. You know, those are all, that's all, that comes with the territory, but you can't complain about that. It's just a blessing to be making music and in the business. And we're just, we're just so thrilled to be back mm-hmm. as evidenced by, uh, I think the joy that everybody was experiencing on, uh, on the last cruise, it was, it was the first sailing mm-hmm. since, since the shutdown. So it was, it was, everybody was amped up, mm-hmm. you know, double what they would have been normally because they, everyone was so happy to be back and reunited. It was, it was quite a, a euphoric sensation, you know? Mm-hmm. Now, was that your first cruise since the shutdown? Do, do you cruise casually? No, you know, the thing is, I, I just I've done so many cruises over the years working on cruises. I probably wouldn't venture to take a, a regular cruise now just because I, we always do at least one or two a year. So, um, OK, that's, okay. And, you know, in a way, that's like my vacation. I mean, we are working and we are, you know, we're we're, we're definitely there to perform and do our, our thing. But it's like a vacation in itself because you still get a lot of downtime. You still get to enjoy yourself. You still get to. uh go out during the day when you get off the ship and go to the ports and see the sights. So, you know, it's, it, you really can't ask for more than that. You know? It's- oh, so you, you were able to do the, the touristy thing. I, I kind of assumed you guys are, were rehearsing all the time. Well, you know, very occasionally, if you have to be back maybe a little earlier to do a sound check or just get some levels, right. But, you know, a lot of our rehearsing is done um, a couple weeks in advance, usually in Los Angeles, California, and uh-huh. so when by the time we get on the ship and the cruise starts, we, we're already, you know, rehearsed and ready to go. So we we come on fully prepared. So that's nice because it gives us an opportunity to, like I just said, you know, get off the boat and kind of experience the regular cruise like uh, like the patrons would, you know, which is great. Mm-hmm. Before you started uh, performing on theme cruises, uh, had you ever cruised? What, when was your first cruise? You know, the no, I had never taken a cruise before playing on, uh, getting the hire to, to play on a cruise. So that would have been 2011, my first cruise. I sailed to Alaska, mm-hmm. and I was 18 years old. I had just just about graduated high school. I was just on the verge of gradu- graduating high school. I did the first inaugural uh, Dave Cousin Friends at Sea cruise to Alaska, and it was uh, quite a thrill, you know, and uh, mm-hmm. I never thought I'd be on a cruise ship, you know, my, my family didn't take cruises prior, you know, we would just go to the beach or something for the week, but, um, there's still an excitement when you get on the boat that, that reminds me of the first time we ever did the cruise. You know, I, I remember being so enamored by the fact that, you know, in the dining room, you could just keep ordering food and, and whatever you want and you, and you don't take out all, you don't take out your, your wallet at the end of it. You just keep, it's just amazing <laughs> little things like that. And I just remember, God, I, I wish more people know about this because it's just like a wonderland. You know, you're, you you go to the casino after, you go to the show, go play tennis, go go to the beach, go to the I mean, go to the pool, get some sun. I mean, depending on the itinerary, but you literally cannot get bored with the amount of activities to do on the ship. It's just amazing, and you're getting to see world class entertainment at the same time. People, music, and artists that people love and grew up and idolize and have listened to. So it's it's really. There's not too many. Um, there's not too many things out there like that. I'd have to say it's it's a very very unique market mm-hmm. for music. Were, were, were you anxious at all on that first cruise in terms of like seasickness or anything like that? I remember a little seasickness. Yeah, the first year. I think we had a couple a, a choppy day, and I remember being a little iffy. But you know, we just took a little Dramamine or something, and it. it and it went away. But uh, no, I don't think nervousness describes it. I think it was just so exciting at the time. I think I, there was so much to take in. I think I just wanted to absorb as much as, as I can uh, of it. Mm-hmm. So it was really, uh, it was really quite an eye opening experience, you know. And then I remember mm-hmm. doing one the following year, and it was it was equally as exciting, you know, because I already by that point mm-hmm. I already knew what to expect, but you know, look forward to some new things, a different ship, different itineraries, new cruise lines. So it's just, you know, it's, it's endless. It really is. Mm-hmm. Just a quick aside. My uh, first theme cruise, it was kind of R and B themed. And uh, one of the headliners was seasick and he, uh, he was escorted to a chair 
And he did his entire set sitting down. And then when he was done, he was escorted off. It was it was kind of touching, kind of. It, it was it, he did a great job. But uh, yeah, I don't know if it was his first time ever on a ship. But <laughs> I, he shall remain. He shall remain nameless. He's an R and B star. But yeah. uh, I thought that yeah. was interesting. Well, you know, everybody reacts differently to the sea. And, uh, you know, there's there's been stories over the years, the artists, you know, tripping on stage and at, a, at a rough sea day. And I remember a uh, an incredible uh, female keyboardist. She was wearing six-inch heels on the stage and was tripping and couldn't keep her balance. And it was just so <laughs> funny, you know, because uh, we're still trying to navigate being, you know, you get your... You get that humble reminder every now and then that you're still on the ocean and the water. And so, you know, things could happen, even, mm-hmm. though, even though the boat is so big. You got to got to be mindful of that. And usually the theater is right at the front of the boat where if you're going to feel any choppiness, the, the most of it is going to be felt there. So that's 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 another important aspect of that. Say something about your latest projects, uh, uh, album, tours, etc. My latest CD is Fire and Desire. That's the name of it. It came out in September of uh, 2021, and it's my seventh studio album and my third album on the Shanaki label, which is a jazz and R&B record label. And um, another busy year coming up of touring mm-hmm. and uh, supporting the CD. And, you know, because we lost the year of touring, you know, with, with COVID, so we're still trying to make up for it and, uh, and get to places that we didn't get to play and, and share some of the music that we didn't get to to play live so another crazy year on the road i'm touring with peter white uh this summer as a, a package show together i have dates of my own of course and um and then later in the uh holiday season i'll be doing the peter white christmas tour with mindy a bear the three of us that'll be my uh, fourth year in a row doing the uh, christmas tour and it's always a great time to spread some holiday cheer and play some christmas music during the year and that's always a, a lot of fun and i always look mm-hmm. forward to that so um, the, the the focus is just to keep keep touring and playing. Mm-hmm. It's, that's what I love the most. I mean, I love the studio. I love recording and producing and writing, which I'll always continue to mm-hmm. do. And I'm sure an, another album will be coming out at some point. But in the meantime, there's nothing like being on stage and performing and just pounding the pavement. I love it. I love being on the road. I'm quite familiar with both of those artists. I love Peter White. And I uh, got an opportunity to take a, a photo with him on the cruise and that photo is 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 in my new book that's going to come out uh, in in a few weeks. Uh, and then Min- oh, that's awesome. Mindy Abair, I'm very familiar with because I live in North Carolina now, but before moving here, I lived in uh, Florida, and there was uh, something called a, a Punta Gorda Jazz Festival. And yes. and uh, Mindy, I, I think maybe she's from around there, but I know she would come. Uh, I, I I went every year, and she she came two or three years that I was there. So she'd have a festival down there every year in Fort de Gordon. And we, and we actually played on those grounds last year in the Christmas tour, which was a lot of fun. So it was great. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I had moved, uh, by, by last uh, Christmas, but, uh, yep. Um, so, so do you have any like fan sites or how, how can our listeners, uh, 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 follow you, stay in, stay, stay abreast of, of what's happening with, uh, Vincent and Gala. I say there's three main spots. Number one, my my main website, vincentandgala.com. And that's mm-hmm. everything you need to know there, the tour dates, um, latest news, music, links to 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 get music, listen to music, CDs. Um, and then there's the social media thing. I'm very active on Facebook and Instagram. I, I always write back to people on there and I encourage everybody to to drop by and, and share a note. And uh, I'm very active posting on there where I'm going to be playing and shows and some fun stuff and some clips of music and things I'm working on in the studio. So it's it's very uh, it's it's a very easy world today to get in touch with somebody and, and, and stay connected. So I think it's great. Good, yeah. good. Let's shift gears and talk about a little bit about the future. So I, I understand you have a, a river cruise coming up uh, uh, later this year with uh, smooth jazz greats uh, Rick Braun, Dave Cos, and, and Richard Elliott. Uh, tell us about that. Yes. Well, Rick Braun a couple years back started a uh, 
Rick Braun signature event series. And, you know, he has his New Year's Eve event every year. But then he started getting into uh, hosting his own river cruise. And I did the first inaugural river cruise with him and Peter White. That was in summer of uh, 2018. And we sailed down the Danube River in Germany. And it was great. And then since that, uh, Rick has done uh, two other cruises with various artists. And I'm going to resume my second cruise with him uh, this July. Again, we're going down the uh, Danube River, I believe, or the Rhine River. I'm not sure. I, these these years roll into one another. But we're mm-hmm. in Germany. And, um, yeah, and what a cast this year. I mean, you know, Dave Koz, Richard Elliott. So uh, that's that's Saxophone City right there. So mm-hmm, we're gonna mm-hmm. have quite a we're gonna have quite a horn section. I'll, I'll I'll say that you know we're gonna do some fun things and team up and do our own shows, play together, and uh, like I said, it, you know, talk about you know we're in the cruise vein. It's, it's 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 similar but different. You know, the river cruise is is much more intimate. It's about 150 people. It's not it's not mm-hmm. like the the massive massive cruise ships, but still the same still the same concept. Very intimate shows every night. And uh, just a little different setup, but um, you know, Rick did a great job of executing this, and he's he's put on he's a consummate host, and he's put on a great uh, couple of cruises these past few years, and this 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 upcoming mm-hmm. one will be no exception, and uh, we're really looking forward to it. And uh, we're going for two weeks this time. Last time he mm-hmm. first year I did it, it was one week, and the event grew in popularity to the point where you could do two weeks, and that's what we're going to do this time, and it's just great for the genre. Because, uh, mm-hmm. you know, there's, it just shows us that there's still a, a huge following and calling for this music. And people are willing to travel at great lengths to to go hear this music and mm-hmm. spend time with the artists. So it's it's all it's all good for our for our music and our genre and, and helping keep it alive. It really is. Well, you know, a river cruise is on my bucket list. So I'm going to have to have a conversation with my wife. Mm. Uh, you know, research, research. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Right. Speaking of uh, bucket lists, what's on your bucket list? You know, I um, if you had asked me that question when I started, it, you know, back in 2010, I would have named a lot of things that I've already did. So I, I feel very blessed that you know um, I've gotten to collaborate with a lot of mm-hmm. artists that I've I wanted to and 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 forget about the places that I've been to. I've never dreamed that I'd see half the places uh that I've been to, you know. And a lot of those, you know, through the cruises, I have to say. A lot of a lot of exotic places that we've got to see through the cruises. Um some not through the cruises. I still want to travel to Scotland. I mean, it's kind of a random thing, but I had a fascination with the Loch Ness monster as a, as a child, so I'd like <laughs> to see I'd like to see Lake Loch Ness and the uh the beautiful uh, surroundings of of Scotland. And believe it or not, my travels have not taken me to Hawaii yet, and I've never been there. And I just know that I'm going to love it from pictures I've seen and what I've heard about it. I'm, I'm I love vintage TV shows. I love Hawaii Five O, the original with Jack Lord. So you know, there's a lot of history there. So you know, I'm I'm, I'm confident that uh, hopefully we'll get to Hawaii at some point. Japan, I've never been to Japan. I'd like to play in Japan uh, to be able to say that um, again. There's a lot of time. I'm in I'm in no rush, but th- those are some. Uh, those are some bucket list at uh, places and experiences definitely to put on the list. Yeah, there's some ardent jazz fans in in Japan. Indeed. Yep. Yes. Yep. yep. No doubt. Hey, uh, before we let you go, uh, I have a couple of uh, fun cruise questions and maybe one one kind of oddball question. Uh, this first one is kind of a standard question, but I always get some good ideas from. Uh, people, what's your favorite cruise drink or cruise dish? <laughs> you know, I uh, there's there's two things I got to say for the drink. I I remember one year I was uh, asked to host a espresso martini hour. Now all this was was I just had to uh, show up and talk about espresso martinis, which I knew nothing about. <laughs> and I never had one before. But it was in support of uh, a spaghettini, which is a, a, an incredible jazz club and restaurant in Seal Beach, California. And they, they had some artists come and they would host some little half hour segments and they'd feature a drink for each artist. So it was espresso martinis with, with Vincent and Gallo. And um, the first time I took a sip of one was in front of, you know, a hundred or so people that had gathered for this event. And I loved it. 
And I remember I was buzzed by the end of the event, you know, because it was strong. You know, I'm I'm not a huge drinker. I, I like beer and wine, you know, just casually. But espresso is is pretty strong. But it kind of you know kind of balanced out with the the kick from the espresso too. So I remember that vividly. And then you know I I remember just loving um mm-hmm. loving the pina coladas at the pool because it's just a great combo of pineapple and you know banana, mm-hmm. which I love. Mm-hmm. And, but the funny part about this is that I would always request uh, a virgin pina colada with no alcohol. And everybody would look at me like I had five heads. I didn't want the alcohol. It ruined the taste for me. I just wanted the regular pina colada mix. And so that became my drink on all the cruises, you know. Try If you like that taste, try a Hawaii Hawaiian vice, a Hawaii vice, which is uh, half pina colada, half strawberry daiquiri. Oh, wow. Wow, I'm gonna try that. So, and, and especially if you you know try it version, sounds like that would 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 fit you well. Wow. Well, we're gonna uh, I'm gonna have to keep, put that on my list next time. I like strawberry daiquiris too. So I you know having the combo of that 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 sounds interesting. So we'll have to try that. Yep. Second question: uh, What's your most memorable or most outlandish or even most embarrassing cruise or port experience? You know, I remember um, actually the very first cruise that I did, I was asked to play with Peter White. I was asked by Peter to play his show. At the time, I was still, a, a, you know, I was I was still part sideman, part, you know, solo artist. And I remember that I didn't, I wasn't aware of how the show, the uh-huh. structure of the shows were going on the on the cruise. This was on the main stage in the theater. There were two acts a night, and so I and Peter was going to go on second. So the first act was on, and I know that he was finishing up. And I thought that for some reason there was like a a, a long intermission in between shows, like a a changeover of 20 minutes or 30 minutes. And so I'm yapping away to somebody, just talking. And then all of a sudden, the changeover happened like that. And Peter looks at me and says, we're on, we're on. Now, I didn't have my sack strapped on. I didn't have the microphone strapped on. I was not prepared. So I remember I never ran that fast in my life and got the horn strapped it on, put the mic on, attach it to the belt. I mean, I was so fast and frantic. I made it out on that stage just for the first note that I had to play. And it probably looked seamless, but if you ever knew the franticness behind that, it was so crazy. And so then I I, I, I knew at that point on, I said never to take for granted again, talking backstage or never underestimate how smooth and quick the cruise shows run. Um you know, in the theater, because it's like a science, and they got it down, and I did not know how it was working at that time, so I was, I was totally uh, caught off guard by that. I'll never forget the, how fast my heart was racing, thinking I wasn't going to make the beginning of the show, because I had to be, I had to play right up top of the show, so it was, I'll never forget that as long as I live. Crazy. Well, well given the high energy uh, uh, set that I saw on, on, uh, celebrity millennium last month i'm sure you did just fine well you know it's uh it's going back now you know it feels like a lifetime ago but uh each each cruise just gets it gets better and better you know we get more experience under our belt and we just uh we just have we have so much fun doing them you know that's the whole thing it's just you can't when you when you're having fun it doesn't feel like work that's that's the thing you cannot mm-hmm. call it work when you're doing something you love that's the bottom line mm-hmm uh, finally, this is the oddball question. I know you have a following, and, and welcome to uh, any Vincent and Gala fans who are listening. Share one thing that my listeners and your fans don't know about you. Well, let's see. Um, basically, I'm you know 100% music <laughs> for the most part, but the other aspects of me, I you know when I'm home, I love cooking. I think it relaxes me. I think it's very similar to writing and creating a song. You know, like we put different instruments and elements together. We get different ingredients and put them together to make a dish. And there's no right or wrong. I I think it's connected in that way. I like cooking. And when it's nice out, I mean, I live on the East Coast. I'm in in New England. But when it's nice out and not winter, I like uh, like landscaping. I like being out in the yard. I like uh, taking care of the grass and, you know, making a little you know, uh, landscape with some stone and shrubs. It's just, it's, it's nice. It's something different to be outside. You're active, gives you a chance to be uh, creative and, and, and design something with the left side of the brain. And, mm-hmm. you know, I, I think it's, I think it's great. So, you know, it's a nice little break from the road and retreat. You know, I'm just out in the wilderness and the quietness and away from 
all the madness. You got to have a little balance in life. You know? G- going back to the, the cooking, do you have a signature dish? I, well, I, you know, growing up in an Italian family, I make, I make a mean Sunday sauce, you know, a red Sunday sauce with macaroni and, uh, and sausage and pork ribs that fall off the bone. You know, you cook it slow. I make a good shrimp scampi, chicken parm. You know, as you could, it's all Italian dishes, of course, as you know. <laughs> all sounds delicious. Yes. Finally, uh, Vincent, announce this week's winner of a copy of either The Joy of Cruising or Cruising Interrupted. Yes, our winner this week, ladies and gentlemen, drum roll please. Our winner is Lynette Ramnarine. Lynette Ramnarine. Congratulations. Great. Uh, Lynette is a member of the Joy of Cruising podcast group, so I will uh, reach out uh, to Lynette soon. All right. Congrats, Lynette. Yes. Well, Benson, best wishes to you. Uh, You know, I would love to have you back maybe after your river cruise so we can just talk about what it's like to perform on a river cruise. Absolutely. We'll have to do a follow-up. I'd be happy to. Yep. Anytime. (laughs) Well, I, I appreciate it. I love your music. I really enjoyed uh, watching you in a number of different uh, settings on on the uh, Smooth Jazz Cruise. And I am very appreciative that you uh, came and uh, spoke to our audience today. Well, thank you for having me on. I'm appreciative that you thought of me and asked me to be in the program. And uh, whatever we could do to spread the word of, of cruising and, and get more listeners and followers, that's 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 what we're here to do. And uh it's it's truly a, a blessing to be a part of all these experiences over the years and being on the high seas. And we're going to continue doing it as long as we can. because It's a big part of our genre and helping keep it alive. So thank you for doing your part as well and spreading the word. All right. Take care, Vincent. We'll see you on the high seas. You got it, Paul. Thank you, my friend. Take care. All right. Bye-bye. The Joy of Cruising and Cruising Interrupted can be ordered at the link on the Joy of Cruising Podcast.com, each for $16.99 plus shipping. Order the soon to be released The Joy of Cruising again, also at the Joy of Cruising Podcast.com for $18.99. For each of the three books, use the discount code Joy of Cruising Podcast and get $4 off. Again, the discount code Joy of Cruising Podcast. Enter to win a copy of the Joy of Cruising or Cruising Interrupted while supplies last at the Joy of Cruising Podcast.com by joining the Joy of Cruising Podcast Facebook group or both to increase your chance to win. A winner will be announced on each show. Please leave us a review and tell a friend about us. Thank you. We hope you enjoyed the brief escape to the ocean. See you next week.